Welcome back guys to more Let's Play Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy Crash 1 and today we are going for another colored gem on Sunset Vista. This is the second level themed like the Lost City and this one is harder and we're gonna play as Coco because we need to give Coco some more screen time because she hasn't been seen since part two. This level is hard. This is one of those levels that I just don't like at all. <sighs> this level is very difficult, but this level also introduces something new, and I'll save it for whenever we actually get to it. But we're also going for our second color gem in this level. This is the... Actually, no, I don't think this level is a color gem. I think this is just a white gem. Yeah, no, this is just a white gem. Now that I think about it, I'm not sure why I thought I had to do a one, one shot run of this level. <laughs> Unless this is another level that still prevents you from getting the white gem. I, I feel like during my practice run, I ran into that issue where I died and it wouldn't give it to me. I'll jump up there and there's an extra Aku Aku mask. Trust me, that will save a life. <laughs> But uh, the, the wall platforms, they're a lot faster, and they're not as in like a rapid pattern. It's more like they all just shoot out at once, so be fast and be careful. That's all I can say. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to play as Coco for a few more levels. I really enjoy playing as Coco in this game. I know she's just another skin of Crash, but that's kind of how I wanted her to be in Wrath of Cortex instead of being an inferior version of her. I hate this jump. I always screw up the timing. I jump prematurely, so I hit the wall and I fall right in the water and just, it, it ruins my day. And we got more of these stinking platforms here. The platforming gets really frantic towards the end. And now you've got platforms that once you jump on them, they start receding into the ground. It's just, oh my goodness, this level, it's unbearably long sometimes. We're just now getting the Tana token. I mean, we're already two and a half minutes into the level, and we're just now getting our first Tana token. I mean, this level's long. Like, I think this is probably the longest level in the game, if I remember correctly. I think this level caps at around eight to nine minutes if I'm going for everything, because, yeah, we can go for everything in this. Whereas the rest of the levels... I think the longest that some of them have ever gotten for me, if I'm doing it in one quick rapid succession, is maybe, like, five or six minutes. I also really hate the timing of these jumps right here. It's like, it is ridiculously cryptic. Am I using the right term there? Is cryptic the right term? Also, I decided to be smart and let this Aku Aku invincibility run its course because uh, in my practice run, when I got to this level, I decided to do a little running and jumping with the increased speed and uh, I failed a lot of the jumps. So I decided to be smart and just let it run its course so I could slowly platform my way through this level because I don't really want to plat through, plow through this level at a really fast pace because then it'll just fall to my death and that will just ruin my mood. I'd also like to point out that the face of Aku Aku in this game, when he's on you, it's a lot more noticeable. It honestly reminds me of his model in Twin Sandy. I don't know why, but the textures and stuff, it just looks a lot like the Twin Sandy one to me. I'm not really sure why, and it's only when he's on your face because when he's small and I don't know, his model looks a little different, but when it's plastered on your face, it's it's so weird. Also, there's a crate up here. You need to lure this dude over here and have him hit it. Also, there's a hidden Aku Aku here, so you can get more invincibility that's going to be useless. But anyways, we're going to break these crates, and there it is. There is a Cortex token. There are two Cortex bonus rounds in this game. And again, I decided to let this run its course because... This is where I died, whenever I had Aku Aku's mask on me. <laughs> but yeah, there are Cortex bonus rounds, two to be specific, and these, if you want to complete the game, are mandatory indeed, even in the PlayStation 1 version, because Cortex's bonus rounds offer keys. Keys to the two secret levels. Sorry about that, guys. I had an audio cut issue there. The video started locking up on me for some reason, because I am doing this in playback right now. But, anyways, there are three Cortex tokens scattered in two levels, and after you complete his bonus rounds, 
you get a key, because there are two secret levels in this game. And they are required, even in the PlayStation 1 version, for 100%. Whereas the Tana and the Brio bonus rounds were never required, because the boxes didn't count towards your tally, the Cortex ones are required because you have to unlock the two levels. Uh, and I actually really like the level that this key unlocks. I don't particularly like the other one that it unlocks, but the one that this one's gonna unlock is actually one of my more favorite levels in the game. And I hate this jump right here, because after you collect the third Cortex token over here, you have to time it just right and jump onto the platform. And if your depth perception doesn't work with you, you could possibly miss jump and then fall to your death. And I have done that before. I have done that before, it is not fun. It is not fun. But anyways, here is the Cortex bonus round. And man, is it a challenging one. I find the Cortex ones to be the hardest ones to complete because they are actually required in the original, so I think that they did that on purpose to make them requirements. But this one is the lesser of two evils. But anyways, Cortex, deciding to cower out of fear, decides to give us a key. Also, we capped the 99 lives. I just noticed that. Awesome. So like I said, guys, I mean, getting lives in this game is really not that hard. It's pretty easy. And that is the third and final Tana bonus round token as well. So we are getting close to the end of the level. We are about six and a half minutes in. Wow. Yeah, this level's long. <laughs> it is a very long level. But when you know what you're doing, it's really not that bad. It's just frustrating. This this level was always one of the more frustrating ones on the PlayStation 1. I think I hate this one a little more than Lost City. Lost City was pretty bad, but this this was just worse. And I don't know why I didn't just run. I should have known that those TNTs were going to blow up, and I'm surprised I survived that. But, y you know, I'm not complaining. Also, this is where the platforming will start to get a little cryptic towards the end. Again, am I using the right term there? Cryptic? No, cryptic is more of a term that's like when you, the game expects you to know something. Like Legend of Zelda 1 on NES. Yeah, that game is really cryptic. Um... What is the word I would be looking for here? Meh. I'll call it the clutch. <laughs> use that in my spiral let's play. I'll use that here too. I think I use it in my Kona Super let's play as well. I'm getting on weird tangents right now. I'm so sorry, guys. But look, there's Cortex Castle in the background again. But anyways, here it is. The box gem. You know, I think now that I remember... The reason that I thought I had to do this level perfect is because during my practice run, I actually missed a box, and I couldn't remember where that box was. So I played through the level a few times until I got it. But uh, anyways, we're going to backtrack again. Because look, this is our secret level we unlocked, Whole Hog, the second and final hog level. And that's sad because I like the hog levels. Again, I've already said it. Love, love, love the hog levels. They're so much fun, and it's just sad there's only two of them. This is the harder of them, though. You're gonna see, I didn't do this one flawlessly. I actually screwed up on this one a few times, and I'm gonna keep in all my fails to show off some of the funny death animations, because the death animations in Crash are hilarious. I think the ones in Crash 1 are a little... tame? Crash 2, and especially Crash 3, has some of the best death animations, though. They're hilarious. That's why if I ever see any of the good ones, I'm gonna definitely keep them in. Like I said, this is a post-commentary Let's Play, so everything has already been spliced together to make it look like I did this all as good as I could. But no, um, if I keep good deaths in, I promise to show them. But like, some of these deaths are just really funny, and I don't know why, but the hog ones in particular are just my favorite. Plus, I just love seeing that eyebrow wiggle. Just love seeing Crash's weird, pervy face before he grabs that hog. Yeah, you can see my life count jump down to 96. I've definitely died a few times. <laughs> it's a shame that the hog levels are just two for two. I, I don't know. I've always really liked the levels where you rode animals. It's fun. They're fast-paced action. And for those of you who know me, I like my games to be fast-paced. That's why I like Sonic the Hedgehog so much. But again, Crash isn't built for speed. He's built for patience. But the levels that are built for speed, I love them. 
They're just, they're, oh, they're so much fun. And it's just a shame that we're not going to get these hogs ever again. Well, the hogs only appeared to crash one. And just like that, we're, we're done with the hogs forever. Oh, it's so sad. But we got our box gem. So there's that. Making great progress here. But anyways, guys, it's on to the boss of the second island. And this is it for the second island. After this, we're going to move on to the third island. This is Koala Kong. This boss, it's a mixed bag for me. I like Koala Kong's design. It's just a crying shame that the only other appearance this guy's ever had was in Crash Bash. Yeah, Crash Bash, the, the party game, the, the minigame collection. Yeah, that. Uh, he made a brief appearance in Twin Sandy, but he uh, he was never used. He was supposed to be used in Twin Sandy, I do believe, based off of their beta content, but, you know, he never was, so... But the boss itself is just kind of... Eh, it's too slow-paced for my liking. You gotta wait for him to throw the boulder at you, and then you gotta spin it back at him once the minecart isn't in front of him, because if it hits the minecart, it's not gonna count as a hit. And then sometimes you'll just be standing in the wrong position and a TNT crate will randomly fall on your head and kill you and just have to start the whole vicious cycle again. And I hate this part right here because it's like, he throws the boulder at me. I don't know how I didn't get hit by that. I've been hit by that before. And see, I hit the cart, so, ugh, because if you wait too long, then the boulder's just gonna fall right into that lava pool and then you're doomed. Then you just gotta go through the vicious cycle again. It's just like, Ugh! I hate bosses that make you do a lot of patience and waiting. I just want to get the bosses over with because the bosses in Crash 1 are very hit or miss. They're either good or they're bad. It's like Papu Papu? I don't like that boss. Ripperu? I do like that boss. Quad Kong? I don't like this boss very much. It's so boring! But the boring boss is over. Let's see his little added animation before he gets taken off the screen. See, stuff like that is cute. I wish they had gotten um, Jess Harnell to do crashes, crash one. Yee <laughs> It would have been hilarious. Heavy machinery! Y'all might remember this level from my demo video. I was really bad at this level. I've gotten better, guys. And I promise you're going to see the embryo bonus challenge. I saw comments. People were sad that I didn't get to show it off. And I'm really sorry. I tried. I just forgot where the second, for the first token was. And I messed up that jump. Because remember in the demo, I thought there was something down here and somehow it didn't register crash jumping down there, but now it works and there's the embryo token. So yeah, you're gonna get to see your amazing embryo bonus challenge that you want to see so badly. Even though I've already shown off like three of them. We can get the gem on this level though, thankfully. It's, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. But, uh, so, Heavy Machinery. What do I think of this level, now that I've, uh, actually gotten a lot more experience on it? I actually like it a lot. It's hard. It's very hard. But I like it. I like these factory theme levels. They're fun. Uh, I'm also going to bring up something that I mentioned in the demo video. Uh, you might remember that I was nitpicking about the fact that they kept the Crash 1 and Crash 2 bouncy crate number tally. In Crash 1 and 2, you had to bounce on those crates 10 times to get the Wumpus up, because there are 10 in each one. Well, Crash 3 changed it. Oh, and also I figured out how to get that life, unlike in the demo. <laughs> he used Crash's big old nose. You had to bounce on them 10 times to get those 10 Wumpus up, but in Crash 3, it was only 5. So I, I nitpicked in the demo video that it was frustrating during the Tana bonus round that I had to bounce on all those bouncy crates 10 times because there's so many of them in the bonus challenge. Well, I'm guessing plenty of people nitpicked about it because I refused to accept that Vicarious Visions actually watched my video. My video was awful. But now in Crash 1 and 2, the bouncy crates, it's down to 5. 5 bounces, you get 2 Wumpa for each bounce. I'm very thankful for that because in the case of this one, it was just a, it was a patient slog and Counting to 10 and then just you flub it up just once and it's just back to the start and you gotta keep doing it. It was just not fun. But since it's been brought down to five bounces, I'm far more forgiving about it this time because it, it's actually not bad. 
it, it makes it go by a lot faster, and I'm thankful for that. So, thank you, Vicarious Visions, for listening to, I'm guessing, plenty of people nitpick. I don't think you listen to me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even think you guys watched my video. But if you did, it'd be a great honor because I love your all's company so much and everything you guys have done. <laughs> Thank you for bringing Crash Bandicoot back. I really want to do the Crash GBA games at one point. I will get to them. I promise. I really want to show off the Crash series. I love, like, every single Crash game. Except for one. There, there's one Crash game that I, I hate. I hate. Like, even the ones that I just consider average, I don't hate them. But there is one crash game that I hate. And that that one's gonna be that one's gonna be a weird let's play. Probably have the girls join me for that one, honestly. I think that'll be make it at least a little more entertaining because it, 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 there's no way I'm gonna get entertainment out of playing that game on myself. Oh my god. I'm not gonna say what that game is, because when we get to that game, you'll know. Y you will know. But it, it's gonna be one of the last crash games. I said one of, not the last. Don't assume I'm hating on the Mind Over Mutants or the Tra Crash of the Titans. I just stuttered there. I'm sorry. Don't assume I'm hating on them. Because I actually like those games. A fair bit, actually. I don't like Mutants as much as I like Titans. But I love Titans. Titans is a really fun game. Also, yes, I will please you all in Brio Wanters by flawlessly playing through his bonus round without failure. You wanted it, you got it. I love Embryo's theme though, seriously. I cannot wait to fight his boss fight. It's gonna be so great. Also look at those lives he's given us. Seriously, six lives. It's like I said, I feel like Brio's give you more lives than the Tana ones, which is awesome. But also kind of weird because Tana's your girlfriend, so shouldn't she be helping you? Give me some more lives! I mean, I get that her bonus rounds are obviously the most common ones, and you're more than likely gonna get to them than you are the embryo ones, but, you know, whatever. Sorry, again, I'm really stuffy. Like, allergy season is really bad right now. It, it's bad. But yeah, we've already topped off 99 lives, and we're only in the fourth episode. It's crazy. But check it out. Another gem. We're up to 10 now. There's only 16 left to go. <sighs> but now we're going to Cortex Power. And this level, we cannot get the box gem for it right now. And I'm also not going to show this level off in its entirety because... Reasons. Um, okay, so this level is interesting. It's like a labyrinth, basically. So, there is a right and wrong way to completing this level. So, we'll be backtracking here in part 5, I believe. And I'll be showing off the level in the entirety the correct way with the box gem route also included. But for now, I just decided to just blaze through this level. And this is like the one level that I actually do that through. I decided to wait out for this because I want to get my double invincibility. And this is the wrong way. It's technically the right way if you're actually trying to, you know, go for the box gem. But since we're not, I figured I would just go the correct way. And I decided to be patient, wait for the Aku Aku Mask to wear out. Because I really didn't want to risk the jump. Again, anytime I play this game, I have to be as, like, careful and strategic as I possibly can, because I am bad at this game. Despite the fact that I have a lot of practice with it, I practiced this game twice for crying out loud. I, I had to be careful. I wanted to be as careful as I possibly could. I also really hate this jump. It gets uncomfortable. And the hit detection is really wonky in it. But, uh, we've reached the end with a terrible, terrible amount of boxes missed. But don't worry, guys. We'll be returning here in part 5 and thoroughly cleaning out the level. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode where we will clear out some more levels.